Today in our 2011 Chevrolet Silverado 3500, we'll be installing the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Ultimate Air Helper Springs with the internal jounce bumpers, part number AL88338. Now before we install the airbags, we're going to go ahead and take a dry weight measurement with nothing in the pickup from the bottom of the wheel well to the ground right at 41 and 3 quarter inches. Now we're going to go ahead and add approximately 2,750 pounds to the bed of our pickup. With our weight added, we'll now take a second measurement from the bottom of the wheel well to the ground. From the ground to the bottom of the wheel well, and it's dropped it to 40 inches, losing 1 and 3 quarter inches with our weight added to the rear of the pickup. Now we're going to go ahead and run it through our test course. As we go through the slalom portion of our course, you can see the body roll in the vehicle with the excessive weight in the back. And we also lose some steering feel as the rear is taking all the weight, pulling the front end up. Now as we go over the alternating bumps that can simulate potholes, you can see the excessive jounce of rebound of our axle caused by the excessive weight. Now we'll go ahead and take our final measurement with our airbags installed, aired up, and our weight back in the truck. From the ground to the bottom of the wheel well, we're back at our original ride height of 41 and 3 quarter inches. And we'll go through our test course again. As we go through the slalom course, you can see we've decreased the body roll and brought back the steering feel because we've corrected the ride height. Now we'll go over the alternating bumps and single bumps. And you can see it really helps control the Johnson rebound with the weight in the pickup. Next, let's go ahead and show you how to install the airbags. Now to begin our install, we need to remove the manufacturer's jounce bumpers. Now they won't all look exactly like this as this one's already been trimmed, but it'll, the removal will be the same as we need to pull the old jounce bumper out of the cup. To do that, I'm just gonna use a flat blade screwdriver, get in behind it, and pry it out. Once we have it removed, we'll set it aside as it will not be reinstalled. Now keep in mind that each process we do here on one side is going to get repeated identically on the opposite side. Now with the old jounce bumpers out, we need to relocate the emergency brake cable. Now this one's already had the bracket taken out that would originally hold it up here against the frame. With the bracket out already moved, we're just going to move it down and out of the way. Next, we'll expose the spring seat. To do that, we need to remove the bolt and pull the bracket and brake line away from the spring seat. Be gentle with the brake line as we don't want to kink or crimp it when we re relocate it. We just need enough room that we can get our airbag, lower bracket, and hardware in place. Now with the driver's side done, we'll move over to the passenger side and again repeat the same process. Now on the passenger side, we also have the emergency brake cable that's bracketed to the lower jounce bumper seat, and we'll go ahead and remove it also. Now with the vehicle prepped, we're going to move to our workbench. We're going to take one of the air springs and roll plates. As you can see, it's already been pre-drilled for the air spring and set it down, cupping the air spring. Next, we're gonna install the 90 degree air fitting, or elbow, and thread it into the top of the air bag. You can see on the threads, where it's already got pre-installed sealant to help it seal so we don't have any air leaks once our airline is installed. Now to install the elbow, you wanna do it hand tight, and then an additional one and a half turns. Now with our air fitting in place, we're gonna attach our upper bracket. As you can see, they're very similar. The only difference is the inside angle to allow for the air fitting goes in opposite directions. Now we'll, the high side or the longer of the two brackets will go towards the front or the cab of the truck with the short side going towards the rear of the truck. 
Also identified here on the bracket is L for left or driver's side. Make sure our air fitting goes in between the cutout. The pre-drilled holes in our upper bracket will line up with the threaded fittings in the top of the airbag and the pre-drilled holes in our roll plate. We'll use the cap headed screw to secure the upper bracket to the airbag. Once I have them installed, I'll go ahead and tighten them down. Now with our upper bracket secured to the airbag, we're going to go ahead and turn it over. We again have the pre-threaded holes in the bottom of the bag. They will line up with the pre-drilled holes in our roll plate. And we'll bring in our lower bracket. Now when installing our lower bracket, the flat side of the bracket will go against the leaf spring pack facing out away from the center of the vehicle so that the angled side will also be on the same side as our air fitting. Now to secure the lower bracket to the airbag, we're gonna use the same cap headed bolt. Now with the driver's side spring assembly complete, I'm going to go ahead and set it aside and repeat the same process with the passenger side. Now with both air spring assembled, we're ready to go ahead and install them onto the vehicle. To make it easier, we're going to go ahead and take the weight off the rear suspension to create more distance between the jounce bumper or the bottom of the frame and the top of the axle. Now that we have more distance here between the top of the axle and the bottom of the frame, we'll go ahead and put our air spring in place. Note, we need to be careful not to pinch any of the brake lines or manufacturer's wiring, not only when we get it in place, but when we install our hardware. Now once it's in place, we'll push the lower bracket back until it's against the manufacturer's spring pack and U-bolt. And the upper bracket should sit just above it with the center hole in the upper bracket being about the middle of the frame. Now when attaching the upper bracket to the frame, provided are two possibilities. One, and most likely candidate will be a U-bolt that will go down from the top of the frame, then through the upper bracket. Let's go ahead and put the first one in place. We work the U-bolt above the frame, then bring it down between the manufacturer's wiring and the frame so that we don't sandwich the wiring. Line it up with the pre-drilled two outer holes of the upper bracket, then secure each leg of our U-bolt with a flat washer and nylon lock nut. We'll just put our fasteners on hand tight at this time. Now, the second form of attaching our upper bracket to the frame will be for vehicles that have a previously installed fifth wheel or gooseneck hitch assembly and the upper portion of the frame is blocked and we cannot get our U-bolt in place. On those applications, we'll use the center pre-drilled hole in the upper bracket as a template, drill it out, and install the self-threading bolt supplied with the install kit. We're gonna use a step bit process where we're gonna start with a smaller pilot bit and then open up to our final size, 5 16 as per the instructions.
Now once we have the hole drilled out, we'll go ahead and install our self-threading bolt and then we'll tighten and torque it to specifications. Now we have it tightened down, I'll go ahead and torque the specifications as per the instructions. Now with the top bracket fastener on the front tightened and torqued, I'll go ahead and repeat the same process of tightening and torquing the U-bolt. you'll see that the bottom of the airbag is a little further out towards the tire than the top. To help line it up, because we want it as straight up and down as possible, we're gonna kick the lower bracket out away from the spring pack. Next, on applications where a U-bolt is installed on the upper bracket forward attachment, we then go ahead and put our clamp bar or axle strap in place. However, because on this application, we had to install the self-threading bolt to secure the forward upper bracket position, we need to install the parking brake cable clamp on the front carriage bolt. We'll take the clamp, put it over our cable. I'm gonna use my pliers Squeeze it back together. Line up the attachment points of the clamp. Then feed it through the carriage bolt. I'll then take the flange nut provided and secure the clamp. Next, we'll go ahead and put the axle strap or clamp bar in place. Securing it with a flat washer and lock nut. Now as we tighten these down, we'll make sure we tighten them down evenly. Next, using the pre-threaded holes in the bottom bracket, we'll, we'll go ahead and reinstall the brake brackets. We'll use the new hardware, which will be a flat washer and bolt. That'll go through our brake bracket and thread directly into the lower bracket. Note there are multiple holes for different configurations. You'll just make sure you pick one it's not a drilled hole, it's a threaded hole. Now with both airbag assemblies installed, we'll move to installing the airline. The airline will come in the packaging in one piece. If running two Schrader valves for manual inflation, you'll find the center of the airline and cut it in half. Now to get a clean square cut without crushing the line, we're gonna use the Airlift Air Hose Cutter part number AL10530. Now once your line is cut, we can take the end that's gonna go into the airbag, line it up with the fitting that we previously installed, firmly pressing it into position, and then pulling out to lock it in place. We'll then go ahead and follow the manufacturer's wiring down the frame towards the bumper. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there because in this application, we're actually gonna run one inflation valve and use an airlift T to connect the two lines together and then one line going to the inflation valve. Let's go ahead and run the passenger side. Now here on the passenger side, we're gonna add the airline protector to help prevent from the excessive heat from the exhaust from damaging the airline. We'll slide it onto our airline first, then take the airline, 
Line it up with the air fitting coming from the top of the bag. Again, firmly press it in and pull back to lock it in place. Then we'll go ahead and route our airline down the frame. Note here on the passenger side, I'm actually gonna run the airline forward just a little bit so I have a good attachment point to keep it away from the heat of the exhaust. Then we'll use the zip ties provided with the install kit to secure the airline as necessary. Now, once we have them routed here to the back, we'll go ahead and mark our length and use our tubing cutter, cut off any excess. We'll then take the T, push our line in, pull out the lock in place for both sides. Now to install our inflation valve in the bumper, we first need to drill out a hole. As per the instructions, we'll drill out a 5 16 hole. Then we'll cut the line for the length that we need. We're running to the T. We're going to start with a nut. Going on to the threaded portion of our inflation valve. And depending on where the nut is, we'll determine the depth that it'll come through the bumper. We're gonna make sure we have plenty of room. Then we'll install a star washer and feed it from behind the bumper out. Install a rubber flat washer, then a metal washer, and a second nut. Once we have that nut installed, we can go ahead and tighten it down to secure the inflation valve. Can install our cap and move underneath and put the inflation valve airline into our T. Now to install into our T, we'll repeat the same process of firmly pushing it into the T and then pulling back to lock it in place. Now to install the heat shield, we need to create some attachment points. We'll bend the tab down and then flatten it back out so it'll be creating an inch of airspace between the tailpipe and the heat shield. Do that for both sides. Then I like to take it, go ahead and bend it a little bit so it'll conform to our tailpipe. We'll then go ahead and use the worm gear clamps provided to secure it to the tailpipe. Let's go ahead and get our clamps in place and then we'll put the heat shield in place. Take the clamp, put it around the tailpipe, bring it back together. We'll go ahead and take up some of the slack in the clamp. Now with our clamps on, slide the heat shield into the place. And just like that, our heat shield's in place, protecting our airbag here on the passenger side. Next, we'll go ahead and test the new air springs by putting some air to it. Then we can check our connection points for leaks using a soap and water solution. Now with our airlines checked, we're ready to hit the road. And that does it for the install of the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Ultimate Air Helper Springs with the Internal Jounce Bumpers part number AL88338 on our 2011 Chevy Silverado 3500.